Have you opened an investigation into whether the Attorney General lied under oath to Congress and whether the Attorney General obstructed justice? I'm not going to go down that road here. I, I know you're not. That's the point. Nobody thinks you've opened an investigation because you're not willing to. And the amazing thing is, Director Ray, I've known you 30 years. You're not a partisan Democrat. You're simply sitting blithely by while career partisans in your agency allow it to be weaponized. And you are damaging the FBI and you are damaging the Department of Justice. Let me ask Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Director Ray, welcome. As you know, I am deeply concerned about the conduct of both the Department of Justice and the FBI, particularly in the last three years during the Biden administration. I think the Department of Justice has been profoundly politicized under Attorney General Merrick Garland. And I think the FBI has as well. And unfortunately, I think you've been unwilling to stand up to senior career officials in the FBI who's allowed the FBI to be politicized. I'll tell you, I regularly speak with FBI agents across the country who are unhappy about the integrity of the institution being weakened because DOJ is being treated as a political weapon. I want to talk in particular about the investigation into multiple allegations of corruption concerning Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. Because the Department of Justice has, I think from the outset, tried at every step to stop investigation into corruption from Joe Biden. As you're aware, a WhatsApp text message was sent to Henry Zhao, a senior Chinese communist, from Hunter Biden that reads as follows. I'm sitting here with my father and we would like to understand why the commitment made has not been fulfilled. Tell the director that I would like to resolve this now before it gets out of hand. And now means tonight. And Z, if I get a call or text from anyone involved in this other than you, Zhang, or the chairman, I will make certain that between the man sitting next to me and every person he knows, and my ability to hold a grudge that you will regret not following my direction. I am sitting here waiting for the call with my father. Now, Democrats and those in the media trying to defend the White House repeatedly say there is no direct evidence of Joe Biden's involvement in his son's corruption. Well, this is a text that is direct evidence that is stating that it is his father that is going to retaliate. Now, an IRS whistleblower, Gary Shapley, testified before the House of Representatives that the natural step he wanted to follow was to determine whether Joe Biden was in fact sitting next to his father when this threat was made to extort millions of dollars from a Chinese communist. And what the IRS whistleblower testified is that when he tried to find out whether Joe Biden was sitting next to Hunter, that the DOJ blocked getting the GPS data on Joe Biden's phone? Did the FBI try to ascertain where Hunter Biden was and where Joe Biden was when this text was sent? Well, I think the questions you're asking uh, go to the ongoing investigation being led by Special Counsel Weiss. And so I'm, I'm not going to be able to discuss what is or isn't in scope. So look, that. there's been testimony under oath from the IRS whistleblower that you did not seek the GPS data. And you're right, David Weiss, the special prosecutor, is in charge of it. And it is David Weiss and his underlings who, the, according to the IRS whistleblowers, have alleged that they're the ones trying to stop the investigation. They allowed the statute of limitations to run on many of the most serious violations. Not only that, IRS whistleblower Shapley testified that on September 3rd, Assistant U.S. Attorney Leslie Wolf explicitly told investigators that despite having probable cause to search, quote, there is no way a search warrant would be approved when the evidence in question was located inside of Vice President Biden's guest house. Wolf stated that, quote, the optics prevented such a search. Is the FBI, do they make a routine practice of allowing partisan political optics to prevent investigating serious evidence of corruption? 
my instructions to our people on this and on every other investigation are that we are to follow the facts wherever they lead, no matter who likes it, no matter what political influence may be out there. Then why did you get the GPS there. data on where Hunter Biden and Joe Biden were? Again, Senator, with respect, I can't discuss but, but it's an not ongoing with respect. investigation. And, and, and Director Ray, you and I have gone round and round on this, because I understand. Anytime you're asked about this, the answer is it's an ongoing investigation. Of course, the investigation isn't ongoing. You're not doing the work. You've got whistleblowers pointing out that you're not doing the work. And you are hiding behind the skirts of the attorney general. Look, the whistleblower also testified that the attorney general, when he came before Congress, go to the next chart, came before Congress, lied under oath to this committee. The attorney general testified to this committee in response to my questioning. I have pledged not to interfere with the Hunter Biden investigation. And I have carried through on that pledge. The IRS whistleblowers have alleged the attorney general lied under oath a felony. Was the attorney general telling the truth when he said this? Do, do we have the chart? We don't have the chart. Was the attorney general telling the truth when he said, I have pledged not to interfere with the Hunter Biden investigation and I have carried through on my pledge? Again, I, I can't speak to the attorney general's testimony. I can only tell you what my instructions have been to our people. Has, and the, I has there been political be interference in the investigation into Hunter Biden and Joe Biden? Not that I have experienced. Were the investigators allowed to investigate whether Joe Biden was complicit in the corruption? Again, there is an ongoing investigation. I'm asking you about corruption led. from DOJ. Were they allowed to investigate Joe Biden or... Is the whistleblower telling the truth that DOJ said Joe Biden's off limits, no questions about the big guy? And as to what is in scope or not in scope of the ongoing investigation, I would refer you to Special Counsel Weiss. That is not me hiding behind anything, Senator. That is a longstanding policy that has been in place Director through Ray, multiple administrations you have a responsibility. going back years and years have and years. a responsibility to the FBI not to allow it to be a partisan tool and a, and a partisan weapon. The testimony, and by the way, the FBI has done nothing. And I have not, and I will not. Whether the Attorney have General you... lied under oath to Congress and whether the Attorney General obstructed justice? I'm not going to go down that road here. I, I know you're not. That's the point. Nobody thinks you've opened an investigation because you're not willing to. And the amazing thing is, Director Ray, I've known you 30 years. You're not a partisan Democrat. You're simply sitting blithely by while career partisans in your agency allow it to be weaponized. And you are damaging the FBI, and you are damaging the Department of Justice. Let me ask you also, the whistleblower testified that investigators wanted to execute a search warrant on a storage unit used by Hunter Biden, and instead they tipped off Hunter Biden's lawyer before the search warrant was carried out. Is it typical FBI practice to tip off the subject of a search warrant before the search warrant so they can remove any evidence that's incriminating? What is typical is that when you're dealing with an individual who has a protective detail, uh, it is typical for agents to be in contact with the, the subject's protective, protective, detail, protective detail. Does the protective detail guard the, the storage unit? Again, I can't speak to the storage unit specifically, but I can tell you is that why, when it comes to... Why would the FBI tip off the subject of a search warrant about the storage unit that was going to be searched beforehand. Does that not undermine the very essence of an investigation that DOJ is purporting to undertake? Again, I'm not going to be able to discuss specific investigative sets. But who that we're is? If you're not, nobody answers these questions, and it's why people are furious with the cover-up, because you don't believe the FBI is accountable to Congress or to the American people. Conduct that occurred before the reforms that before we put in reform. place. You're, before the reforms you put in place, reforms, the text of which we don't even have access to, reforms that you've put in place. I've been on this committee for 13 years. During the entirety of those 13 years, I've expressed concerns to FBI directors appointed by presidents of both political parties and three different presidential administrations. Every darn one of them has told me the same thing. Don't worry about it. We've got this taken care of. We've got new procedures. It's going to be different now. It's never different. You haven't changed. And you keep referring to these policies, these new procedures. We haven't seen that. We're not even allowed to have access to it. And we have absolutely no reason to trust you because you haven't behaved in a manner that's trustworthy. You can't even, as we sit here, tell me that people who intentionally, knowingly, deliberately violated the civil rights of American citizens, that, that they were fired. 
or that they had their security clearance stripped. Now, in 2022, FBI and other agencies searched Americans' communications over 200,000 times, only 16 of which were evidence of a crime-only searches that returned information. I'd like to ask you to, to give a, a yes or a no uh, answer to these questions. Were the three related batch queries consisting of over, over 23,000 separate queries relating to the events of January 6th, were those evidence of a crime only queries, yes or no? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. The answer, what is, I can't, what, the answer is no. I, what I do I, know the answer. The answer what, is no. Were there 141 okay. I, queries for the activists arrested in connection with the uh, George Floyd protests uh, here in Washington, D.C., evidence of a crime only queries? Those were non compliant queries. Uh, and again, they all predate the reforms that we've put in place, which. Which Before echo we, other reforms that ever, other FBI directors which, have told me about to, every darn year. If How about I may. 19,000 donors to a political campaign? The answer there is no. What about the query for a sitting member of Congress? The answer there is no. What about the query involving a U.S. senator, which for all we know could be any one of us? The answer is no. And so what, what does that tell me? Well, what I'm hearing and what these data points all point to is that a warrant requirement or prohibition relating to, quote unquote, evidence of a crime only queries would not have been uh, something that would have prevented any of the most egregious examples of the abuse that we've seen under Section 702. So the FBI is already required to obtain a court order in some circumstances before accessing the contents of Americans' communications in the context of 702. They're already required for that in some circumstances. Since 2018, how many times has that requirement been triggered according to government reporting? Do you know? Are you talking about the so-called F2? Yes. Yeah, I've uh, how many times has it been triggered? Yes. I think it, I think there have been two instances where I think is maybe the number. 100, 103, 103 times yeah. it's been triggered. And out of those 103 identified times, uh, the FBI should have obtained a court order. How many times did the FBI actually obtain one? Do you know? Now that I think the answer is none. Zero. So you're telling me that the FBI has completely ignored the limited court order requirement that it's already subjected to. You have the audacity to come here, and you told us that getting, uh, adding a warrant requirement to 702, even for queries involving U.S. persons on U.S. soil, that that would amount to some sort of unilateral disarmament. That, you have a lot of gall, sir. This is disgraceful. The Fourth Amendment requires more than that, and you know it. I know every single time for centuries even prior to the founding of this country, there were similar protections built into the laws of the United Kingdom before we became a country. Even then, the government was making the same darn argument you're making today, which is, it's too hard. This would make it hard for the government. It's why we have a constitution, sir, and you must comply with it. Mr. Chairman, may I respond briefly? When you ask why are things different this time, I would point you again to the findings of the court and the department themselves, both of which have not been shy about identifying some of the same instances that you cited in our colloquy, they themselves have observed the effectiveness of the reform, which is why the uh, pre versus post date of the reforms becomes very significant. So that's number one. Second, second, uh, as to your claims about constitutionality, I would point you back to what the case law actually shows on this subject, which is that no court has found 702 in its current form to be uh, unconstitutional, and every court to have looked at it has found it to be constitutional. Well, and last point. How lucky last for you, point, because no one has standing to do that. No one knows when they're being surveilled. That, that, that is not an argument, last, sir. Last point, Mr. Chairman, uh, is that in some of the instances, and you went through a number in your uh, questions, in some of the instances in particular that I know about, uh, those are instances where the queries were run in order to get to a public official member of Congress to warn them about foreign influences targeting yes, them, and a warrant would not have enabled that. We yeah. call those consent searches, and consent searches do not require a warrant, sir, and you know that. There is nothing that you have done that is not entirely within the FBI's control and supervision. You're asking me to believe something that is not believable because you're your agency has made it unbelievable, and I refuse to accept it. 